thank you chairperson so first of all i sound similar with uh, sandeep that we all got excited when the glargin was launched i have practiced 40 years so i have seen the time when most impure beef and ox insulins were used with a glass syringe and a metallic needles and patients had to boil so some of the senior people who are here who have practiced more than 40 years would know that kind of a story and i have seen the evolution of all the insulin i myself have done more than 15 insulin clinical trials including registry trial so i am talking slightly telling you all the difficulties we have with insulin but we still don't get things right it's the most effective drug and this talk is not sponsored by any company no lecture fees have been paid this is all from practical experience you have experience and we have experience so i am not going to show you many clinical trial why we fail with insulin the most potent agent the most important reason being poor titration we initiate insulin blood glucose goes down a1c reduces from 11 to 8.5 but we don't reach 7 or 7.5 we inject far more less insulin than what patients need we talk about 0.2 unit per kg body weight but most insulinopenic patients need 1 unit per kg body weight and we don't reach till that time for a basal insulin we need up to half a unit per kg body weight so large majority of the patients would need from 0.3 to 0.4 and 0.5 we select a wrong insulin some need premix we select basal some need basal but we select premix we try to minimize the number of pricks large majority need a second prick what is the second prick is your decision based on the profile but we don't do that some of the errors which patients do wrong syringe dr sandeep mentioned about a 40 iu syringe and a 100 iu insulin vial insulin patient cannot be managed without self monitoring so just on that first point underdosing is the most important we all initiate glargin with 10 units and average dose in india is 16 unit most clinical trials have used far more why does this happen it's the algorithm which is not given in the hands of a patient i initiate glargin i write four titration step plus 2 at what blood glucose level is written on a paper minus 4 is written if a blood glucose goes below 100 or below 70 patient is going to call you or send you whatsapp message we do not act we do not like to we are not being paid for those advices repeatedly in one consult we don't have a structured charge system for repeated advice what is necessary to reach the right dose of glargin 80 90% of diabetics are seen in a private setting and patients take it granted that i paid fees once and that's enough and i can continue to get an advice so i hardly see anybody writing an adjustment protocol for years together there had been no algorithm published how to titrate we took a time to now all our insulin patients monitor but we don't adjust in a way so number of patient visit cost to the patient poor explanation to the patient sanofi had certain publication which has shown in relation to the patient patients were not explained that initiation is just sufficient you will need half a dozen or more titration this is the goal this is the fpg we have to reach hba1c is just not a goal with glargin and most of these things truly apply to glargin which is the most simplest insulin any doctor who doesn't know anything on insulin can still handle glargin very well almost 10 15 years back i recall a talk by john bush in mumbai which i was chairing one unit a day increment was a fantastic solution which he was following 
Now, whether you do one unit a day or one unit every second or third day would take the patient to a goal. How much time a patient would require, I will tell you. But this is probably similar diabetes practice study. I am not sure this is landmark or not. Again, this is also Sanofi sponsored one dozen top diabetes clinic in the country. And this is a practice data. Sandeep exactly mentioned 23% achieved glar control with glargin. This, there are many, many papers, meta-analysis, pooled analysis, highest is 40%. Couple of clinical trials have shown with glargin that 60% patient, but by and large, you can take it, half the number of patients would reach the target. This is one my dose coach, which Sanofi had created an application where an app will titrate blood glucose and this was six center design. I presented a paper at IDF in Malaysia four years back and this was done twice in a week, forced titration based on a fasting glucose. We did 140 patients. This is the finding that time to reach a target fasting glucose was 41 days. Number of titration of two units happened 10 times. So people need multiple time titration. But A1C reduced from baseline 9.9 .9 to 7.2. This is an average. It doesn't mean that all reach 7.2. The fasting glucose reduced from 188 to 129. So as Sandeep said again, insulin is good. If you and your team and your patients are good, otherwise patient will fail in insulin. A second reason why patients fail on insulin is a baseline A1C. Baseline A1C here you see in the top graph is 10%. If you recall Sandeep's bar diagram and all the clinical trials on glargin, an average A1C was 8.9. Across all premixed trial over last 20 years published on analog have baseline 8.9 when they are enrolled. In real world, our patients initiate insulin with more than 10%. If they initiate with more than 10%, we are late. They are highly insulinopenic or they are highly insulin resistant. They cannot reach and as the numbers show here, 21%, 28%, all these numbers will speak roughly 30 and surely less than 40%. So most patients here start with more than 9% and then you will have few people reaching the target glucose. Another important barrier for healthcare professional, fear of hypoglycemia. Exactly at 4.15, I was listening to a talk of hypoglycemia in a bunting hall by Pratik, who is a UK expert, and he talked on hypoglycemia, and he said, not true hypoglycemia. He said, fear of hypoglycemia in the mind of doctors. He showed a couple of papers. It's not the level of glucose, but time for which patient remains in hypo. He quoted an excellent paper of diabetes care in pediatric age group. It required few hours, four hours to remain below 40 to get a seizure. He showed how long a hypoglycemia sustain will go from prolonged QT interval to anything else on an ECG rhythm. I would not be able to tell you more on that. But failure to titrate because patient is asymptomatic with A1C of 8% and glucose is partially controlled. What about patients identified barriers, weight gain, perception of a worsening disease and unable to reach A1C? Incorrect dose. Less dose is so common as we mentioned. Because of less dose, PP will not get controlled. On basal, Still fasting is achieved, but PP is not achieved. Patient would need a basal plus or switch over to premixed insulin. Variation in the need of an insulin. Once an insulin prescription is written, patient would inject the same dose every day. But there is a variation based on how much is the insulin deficiency in a given patient. 
variation in food intake, variation in physical activity, and if a patient is receiving because of cardiovascular disease, kidney disease, other associated sickness, then you have more difficult patient, you can never achieve that easily. What about which insulin? Basal is selected, A1C is more than 10%. There is a publication that by and large, you may have a difficulty in reaching and controlling PPG. There is no harm in initiating with basal. If you cannot achieve, switch over to premixed or add basal plus. Similar is premix selected when basal was necessary. Why fail with basal plus bolus? Three to four doses. Each dose needs adjustment. Each dose needs monitoring. Each dose needs carb counting. What are insulin errors? Unintentionally took a wrong type of insulin. Large majority of the patients inject after the meals without your knowledge. Not talk about how many minutes before they should ideally inject insulin. A wrong syringe of 40 and injecting out of a cartridge or a 100U vial, Sandeep has spoken. And the most important is a structured monitoring which is necessary. Structured means the kind of insulin what you are using and at what time the blood glucose should be monitored. Most of the time you should monitor pre-breakfast and a pre-dinner. There is also a paper by Jeremy Boliv who has studied very well how a switchover from glargin at bedtime to glargin in the morning gives you entirely different profile and pharmacodynamics with a glargin insulin. So anybody who gets hypo with bedtime glargin can try switch over to a morning glargin. This is one paper which has 22 million discharge from 2008 to 13. An excellent data from Japan, 25,000 hospitalization for hypoglycemia in a small country. A mean age of the patient was 73 years. More than 90% were more than 60 years. So when you are handling senior citizen, be careful and look for certain reasons. I was talking to somebody in the morning, hypo is a profile of insulin or it's a profile of a patient. Patient does certain things and hypo happens. So it's a characteristics and people in senior citizen age group have plenty of issues in relation to dinner. The dinner gets too lighter, insufficient carbohydrate, whether it's in dinner or it is with rapid acting insulin. So hypo has a strong association with advanced age, malnutrition, a low fat in the body cannot fight hypoglycemia. Thin people, cachectic people, old people, poor general condition and a poor food intake. Why patients discontinue insulin when it has been initiated? So newly diagnosed gets controlled in a month or less than a month. Perioperative or preoperative. Any insulin initiated in sickness and if symptoms of glucotoxicity disappear, patient would try to respond and frequently on insistence of a patient. The last or a couple of slides, what is the solution for healthcare physician? How do we adjust the dose? For those who have not had enough experience of adjustment, it's many times even if a good diary, well monitored, new application of monitoring, still the doctor cannot figure out what I should adjust or a titrate. Carb counting is an excellent modality and it is a must for type 1 diabetes, but is a terrible job for most nutritionists Leave aside, the doctor can really manage. I try to tell the patient no carb in breakfast, consistent carb and a menu in lunch and a variable dinner and a different kind of an insulin profile. This is how I try to manage 
a judgment on insulin sensitivity, another trick, a good skilled physician could be figure out and see how the insulin is required. CGM can guide you, sure, but use is limited as talked everywhere, very small number of people and still I am not sure CGM will identify hypoglycemia but may not take you to the right dose of insulin. I thank organizers and I thank all those who are sitting here to listen to this talk. Thank you.